just talk about the general terms of uh, economics that we are okay. in. Well, we're facing a historic, uh, almost biblical level onslaught uh, on the middle class uh, and on poor people in this country uh, by a bunch of corporate greed heads and right-wing uh, uh, boneheads uh, who feel free to run roughshod uh, over our working families, over our family farmers, over small business, over uh, our air and our water, uh, over our values of fairness and justice and opportunity uh, for all. Uh, and that is uh, at, at, at such a level uh, that has accelerated uh, almost geometrically uh, in the last decade and now is just uh, risen to very high levels. Uh, I'm talking about those uh, nutball governors uh, uh, out in uh, places like uh, Wisconsin, uh, Ohio, uh, New Jersey, Maine. Uh, you expect it to be in my state of Texas or Arizona or may maybe even Florida, but now it's in states that have a strong progressive history. Uh, and so that is running roughshod uh, over uh, our, our values, but is going to uh, knock down the future of our country because they want to impose their plutocracy over our democracy. It's been a prosperity going on towards the very higher upper echelons of the, the society and 1% people who control it. Yeah. Could you talk about this, the gap between poor and rich yeah. that it has so widened uh, within the last few years? It's, it's now am among the highest in the world, uh, certainly the highest in the industrial world. Uh, other nations uh, don't allow this to happen because it's dangerous. Uh, to, you know, if, you, if you can't take care of the poor, uh, then how are you going to protect the rich? <laughs> I think John Kennedy said that uh, years ago. Well, now, uh, the, the, the situation that spurred him to say that has grown just dramatically uh, worse. Uh, in the last decade, uh, the, all of us contributed to vast growth in our economy uh, and in productivity. Uh, yet 99% of the benefits of that flowed to the very wealthiest people in our society. Uh, and that uh, has led to uh, an understandable anger. And then at the end of that spurt of growth, uh, we had the collapse of our economy caused by Wall Street uh, bankers uh, who then got bailed out, got to keep their jobs, and now are back paying themselves uh, multi-million dollar bonuses uh, each, uh, yet uh, they didn't take any, our bailout money and apply it to the real economy to create jobs for people. Instead, uh, they, they put it into self-serving, uh, really casino-style enterprises. So this is only exacerbated. Uh, the problem. Uh, and now people are not only angry about that, uh, but the good news is they're taking action against it. People are rebelling. As you know, bankers are sitting on two trillion dollar cash. Yes. What else do they want from us? <laughs> they want it all. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's like the old lion's share. You know, they say they want the lion's share, but if you really read Aesop's fable, uh, the lion didn't get the preponderance of the meat uh, that was achieved by, by three others and the lion. Uh, rather, the lion took it all, <laughs> and that's what they're after. Is it part of this, the philosophy of ruling class and the capitalists that they want everything that we got? Uh, I don't know that it is a philosophy. Uh, I mean, I think it is just an unrestrained narcissistic greed. Uh, to the level that even the head of Goldman Sachs uh, claimed that he was doing God's work, <laughs> uh, enriching himself and, uh, and, his, uh, and his wealthy uh, colleagues, uh, uh, and meanwhile stiffing uh, everyone else. Well, I, I don't, you know, the, the Bible does portray sometimes a pretty mean God, but I don't think God is that vicious. <laughs> um, we're talking about poverty in the United States. Can you compare that to the rest of the developed world, in other words, the Western countries? Where are we standing with poverty level here compared to them? Well, we're, we're, we're at the bottom, uh, and, we're, and we're in a race to the bottom, too. Uh, in those countries, uh, take Germany or even France, uh, whom our leaders like to make fun of the French. Uh, but the French, uh, even under the conservative government that they have now, uh, have a value system that doesn't allow the few uh, to take advantage of the many uh, and knock people down into abject poverty. They establish a real social... Uh, safety net and not only have we had an inadequate safety net uh, for the last several years uh, but now they're taking the uh, 
the chainsaws to that safety net and shredding it. Uh, poverty is on the increase. Uh, at the same time that the Republicans in the House of Representatives just proposed uh, uh, cutting uh, food stamps, uh, cutting uh, Head Start, uh, cutting all social programs that benefit uh, poor people, saying we can't afford it. Uh, at the same time, they were calling for more tax giveaways to the hedge fund billionaires uh, and the, the richest corporations in the world. But why would they be driving to get uh, push poor into a poorer situation? Wouldn't that like debunk? Wouldn't that like debase the whole society? Of course it does, uh, and and it's it's a test of our values as a nation of whether we're going to continue to let that happen. Uh, we can't let the people who are doing the thievery uh, decide what the policies are going to be. Uh, we the people have got to take charge again uh, and say no uh, to this just rampant uh, greed. Uh, that, as I say, that, you know, the, the, the Tea Party has this slogan, take back America. Well, I don't want to take it backward. I want to move America forward. And that means investing in ordinary people because there's genius out there in poor people. There's genius in working class and middle class people. And for us as a society to say, no, we're not going to pay any attention to them. We're just going to knock them down. That means you're denying this nation the possibility of being great, much less being good. As you know, all the jobs that we have had, they've been moved out of country, either purposefully or not. But we only left with military and military industrial complex. Could you talk about that? Yeah, well, we've militarized our economy. Uh, we've militarized uh, uh, much of our environment. Uh, we're militarizing just uh, our, our whole society, uh, really. And that's the one thing the, the elites are willing to spend money on because they're going to need the military <laughs> to defend uh, themselves against us. Uh, but as we're seeing in Egypt and elsewhere around the world, the military doesn't always want to attack their own people uh, in terms of the rank and file soldiers and even officers. Uh, so I think they're on the wrong path there. Is that the last vestige of a, an empire that spends all its money into military? Yeah, the last vestige of an empire is one that, uh, that doesn't give a damn about the, the ordinary people uh, in the country uh, and that then uh, puts money into Wall Street speculative games, uh, military uh, uh, wars, endless wars, permanent war, uh, and steps like that. Uh, and I have one or two questions. Yeah. That has to do with jobs. Mm -hmm. As you know, like the expectation was so many, about 250,000 jobs should be created per month, and yeah. now the last one was about 50 or 60,000 yeah. jobs created. Yeah. Can you talk about that? That What are the causes of that? Since well, we have all the money on hand, the banks have it, and all this. Well, what, what the CEOs and the wealthiest investors uh, have learned is that they can make money uh, without hiring people, much less paying good wages uh, to people whom they hire. Uh, that they can make money uh, through uh, casino dealings, that's as Wall Street's involved in, these hedge fund operations and other speculative enterprises. Uh, they can uh, make money using machinery and technology. They can make money by uh, going abroad and finding, uh, you know, go going from country to country to find the lowest wage uh, possible. Uh, the former head of General Electric uh, once said back in the 1990s that he wished he could put his factories on a barge. And then if, if wages went up in one place, he could move that barge to another place uh, to get even cheaper wages. So uh, they're in the business of knocking down uh, workers and knocking down the income of, uh, of the middle class and the possibility of the middle class. What's the hopes for middle class and working class in the United States? The people themselves, the middle class and working class people uniting with poor folks. Uh, we, we have to form a grassroots movement uh, that is a populist movement, uh, not a liberal movement going out and trying to hand people uh, benefits, but rather a populist movement uh, that uh, restructures our economy. Inst instead of bailing out the existing banks and continuing to let the, uh, the thieves run those banks, uh, we should have taken the jobs away from those thieves, broken up those banks, because there are plenty of banks in this country. There are plenty of uh, uh, credit unions, there are plenty of cooperative banks, there are plenty of community banks that didn't get in trouble. They didn't cause the crash. Put the money in them. Uh, decentralize that money at, at a grassroots level. You know, they say money is like manure. It, it's only good if you spread it around. <laughs> if you leave it piled up in one spot, then it's going to stink uh, real bad. Uh, and that's, what, that's what's happened to us. So we have to have a political movement, a progressive political movement, that will unite uh, people uh, to join together 
uh, and fight back uh, against these these plutocrats who are stealing our democracy and the possibility of America out from under us. Any last words, advice you want to give audience? Well, just uh, you know, take action wherever you are. Uh, do what you can, uh, when you can, as often as you can. Uh, that we see that happening in the rebellion in Wisconsin, uh, where the, the governor is, is dead set on trying to take away the, the rights of workers even. Not just take away their jobs, but take away their rights. Uh, and then to knock down teachers, to knock down farmers uh, in, in that state. And the people are in open rebellion against this guy, They're recalling senators who voted uh, to allow this to, to proceed. Uh, and they're in a heap of political hurt right now. I mean, that governor's uh, approval ratings are over in the ditch. Uh, so they're not getting away with it. Uh, but we have to press that and organize that and make it not just in Wisconsin, but to flow across the country. How do you see United States in 10 years down the road? It's up to us. Uh, I don't know. It could be a very bleak future uh, or it could be a very rosy uh, situation. And as we've seen elsewhere around the world, in the Mideast right now, for example, uh, things can happen very quickly. Thank you very much. Okay. Sir. Thank you. I greatly appreciate it. You're welcome.